Hey guys, what is up? It's Safan Aviation here back with another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. Today we're gonna be continuing from where we left off, which was how to start up the A32NX mod from a cold and dark state. Today we're continuing from there on, so we have the aircraft ready for pushback. We're gonna push the aircraft back and then we're gonna start up the engines I'm going to teach you how to start the engines and then we're going to move uh, on to taxiing and then finally taking the aircraft off so just to give you a small review uh, of last times class students is that uh, we've got our route into the map or I'm just uh, simplifying everything so we've got the map the green solid green line shows that the flight plan is all set and ready to go you can increase your ND's range from here to see farther you see as I increase the range I can see more of where I'm going and all the waypoints and airways in that direction our next our uh, first waypoint in our way is this uh, STOKD and it is a 151 nautical miles away as you can see the first ring where my arrow is going is 160 nautical miles so you can see this waypoint is a bit behind that hence proving that it is 151 nautical miles away um, other than that here is our flight management computer I guess and uh, we have our flight plan all here it also shows this waypoint which is in white shows that this is our next waypoint for today's flight we have a flight level of 380 which is 38,000 feet and as soon as we push back and start the aircraft up I'm just gonna give a brief uh, idea to you guys on how to set up the autopilot for this aircraft now we're gonna continue on to pushing back um, I'm using the uh, interactive uh, I, I forgot the name but uh, yeah the push back push back helper it's a mod you can get it off flights simulator.to and it's free you can install it into your community folder and that will uh, give you I'd say a more sort of realistic pushback and you can also control the pushback tug with your rudder which is also used for taxiing in the Microsoft flight simulator so as you can see we have the pushback truck already here we're gonna just press start pushback there's gonna be some audio it's gonna talk about how the bypass pin is being installed into the forward landing gear I'm gonna listen uh, let you guys listen to that and once we push back I'm gonna start off from there again and I'm just gonna press start pushback now and I'll ground. let you enjoy the rest this is ground stand by As you can see, the pushback tug is positioning itself near the aircraft, and then the pushback can get going. Then you can adjust some of the lights to your liking. Mine are at max brightness. Also, switch on the dome lights, okay, which are here. Brakes are set. You may lift. Parking brake set. Lifting the aircraft. Standing by for pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Parking brake set. Okay. Cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Uh, I already have the parking brake set to a key on or a button on my uh, hardware but if you don't Please the parking brake is here so you can just click that and it's gonna go off. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback you can start the engines in sequence. So we're not you gonna start, start in the sequence. We're not gonna start the engines in sequence right now we're gonna completely push back start the aircraft and then start the engine so that I can give you guys a more proper introduction and a guide to as to how to start the engines so we're just gonna switch to the outside view and I'm just gonna get this aircraft ready so 
so now I'm steering my aircraft the especially the specifically the pushback truck with my rudders Align it properly. And I guess we're done. So we're just gonna switch into the inside view and stop push back. Okay, push back completed. Please set your parking brake. Parking brake set. Parking brake set. Lowering aircraft. Ground. You may disconnect. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. Pin has been removed. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. So now that the pushback truck is moving away, we can move on to starting the engines. So first thing you want to do before even starting your engines is going up to the top and turning the beacon lights on. Once again, I have those mapped to my hardware, but you can just physically turn them on from here. So once we've done that, I'm just going to show you what the beacon lights look like. You can see these red lights that are flashing here. These are the beacon lights. Their main purpose is, in simple words, to warn people, don't come near the aircraft. We're starting, the, the engines are either running or they're starting up. You're going to get sucked in. And I'm not joking, that's an actual possibility because of the power of these uh, modern day jet engines. So once we've turned the beacon lights on, we can now proceed to starting the engines itself. So the first thing you want to do is go from here and we're going to set engine mode to IGN start, ignition start. I'm just going to move this here so that you can give a get a better view. So you can see we are, we're at, we are at the normal mode, we're going to switch to IGN ignition start. We're just going to do that and once that happens the EPU will become a bit silent the reason it's now directing all of its power towards the engine so that those can start up so we're just going to start up engine uh, we're going to turn on the engine master 2 on first and you're going to see the engine spring to life If we look at our instrumentation we can see that the temperature of engine 2 is rising it is currently at 470 degrees Celsius and increasing the n2 percentage is also increasing what is the n2 the n2 is basically the core of the engine how it's starting up the turbines inside there are also starting up it's at so once we're at 4 at 19 or 20 over here that basically means that the engine is ready for uh, ready for use see it says avail here which means it's available for use now now we're just gonna switch on engine number two as well now you could hear the famous Airbus bark there um, which is basically the hydraulic system springing to life as the engine comes on second one you can also see that the temperature is slowly going to increase and the n1 percentage and the n2 percentage are both gonna increase over here you can also see all the pressure and the oil quantity as well as the fuel used by the engines As you can see the temperature here is increasing as well it's around 548 
and increasing degrees Celsius. Once the engine turns on and stabilizes a bit, this temperature will drop. As you can see, it has begun to drop now. And it also shows a wheel, which means that now that both of, en of the engines are running, we're just gonna go here and put this engine mode selector to normal again. Once we've done that, we have no use of the APU now, so we're just gonna switch off the APU. First, we're gonna switch off the APU bleed and then the APU master switch. So, since the engines are now the primary source of power for the aircraft, it will power everything from instrumentation to the air conditioning for the passengers. Those are on. The APU is mainly used for this purpose for the ground operations and starting the engine. Now, once we've got that cleared out of the way, the next thing you want to do is go to prepare for your takeoff and one thing you want to do is set your auto brake to maximum auto brake comes on if you suddenly decrease power and basically in the case in the case if you have a rejected takeoff in which you will have to apply maximum braking to stop the aircraft other than that you'll have to arm the ground spoilers because once again, if you reject the takeoff, you need to brake as much as possible and of course spoilers play a very important part in blocking the lift on the wings of an aircraft so that the plane basically won't get up. The next thing you want to do is set your flaps. Now flaps increase the surface area of the wing and by doing so they allow the aircraft to take off at lower speeds because as there's more surface area, there's more lift being generated at a lower speed. So we're just going to set flaps to 1 and on our instrumentation we will see that the flaps, slats and flaps are in the 1 plus F position. As you can see there's also a small checklist here, auto brake max, signs on, cabin check, spoilers arm, flaps takeoff and takeoff configuration. We can also go here and test. If there's nothing in the test and it doesn't uh, scream at you, that means you're practically ready for takeoff. The next thing you want to do is go to the top and turn on your landing. Uh, sorry, and turn on your nose taxi lights. Once you've done that, you can see here that we've got the both the engine running and we've got the taxi lights now on, indicating we're ready for taxi. Now we're just gonna get going. So the first thing you want to do is of course turn your parking brake off as you can see it's in the off position right here parking brake off and you can just apply small increments of power for the aircraft to get going once it starts moving we can really you know just bring the throttle levers to idle and the aircraft will taxi on idle thrust the rest of the way since we are at LA right now or KLAX, Los Angeles International Airport, we're going to be taxiing to the longest runway they have today, is that which is runway 25 right. So I applied some power. As you can see, my throttle levers are going a bit up. And you can see that the aircraft is starting to increase its speed. Here we can also see our ground speed, which is increasing. The maximum taxi speed uh, is technically just uh, 20 knots but if you're in a hurry and don't want that much realism you can taxi faster so we're just gonna taxi over to the runway right now and there's a truck we're just gonna ignore that I'm gonna turn on the taxiway going to be a long taxi due to the size of LA airport as you can see LA is one of the handcrafted airports here in the Microsoft flight simulator which means basically that's more realistic and true to life compared to other airports it's also modeled more beautifully now, as we go on I just like to introduce and just say a couple of things one thing is that below 10,000 feet is a general rule 
that you cannot fly above uh, the speed of 250 knots so once we get to the threshold of the runway before uh, we go on to the runway we're going to set the autopilot speed for 250 knots and we're going to set our altitude it's all very simple and nothing to worry about basically as you can see we are at idle thrust right now the throttles are at idle and the aircraft is still taxiing at a speed of 20 knots and you can just apply some braking when you want to turn or if you think the aircraft is going too fast the sun is rising some braking to just slow down the aircraft for the turn as you can see we're just outside the runway now so on this holding zone we're gonna stop the aircraft brake apply the parking brakes and now I'm just gonna give a brief, brief introduction to the autopilot system. So all you wanna do is go here, increase selected airspeed, and just increase that to 250 knots. Once it's at 250, just go here and engage selected airspeed mode. As you can see here on the display we can now see 250 in blue which means the aircraft has responded to our commands and has in its systems that once we take off we want to reach a speed of 250 knots after that as I told you earlier our flight level for today or cruising altitude is 380 or 38,000 feet we're just gonna increase that from here we're going to go to 38,000 and just by the way 39,000 feet is the peak altitude for the A320 NEO it can't go higher than that and then you engage selected altitude mode once you do that you can see the 38,000 is right here which shows us that the aircraft once again has responded to our commands and will now climb up to a altitude of 38,000 feet one more very cool feature of this aircraft that I absolutely love is that there's this cabin call sign before we do that we're gonna just turn all of our lights on um, even for flying under 10,000 feet you need your landing lights on so we're gonna turn those on we're gonna turn our nose lights to TO or take off we're going to turn our runway turn on lights to runway turn lights to the on position and we're going to turn the strobe lights to the on position now what do the strobe lights do they're very big flashy lights that basically make other aircraft aware as to your surroundings just so that you guys can see i'll just make it night time so you can clearly see what the strobe lights do 
as you can see here these lights are very fl uh, very bright and can be seen once an aircraft is entering a runway till the point that an aircraft is exiting that runway we keep the strobe lights on that's just to warn other aircraft that another aircraft is nearby so you can just make it a bit brighter now so that it's, things are more easier for you all to see and now that we've got that sorted we we'll just go into the cockpit and do a small instrument check so we're just gonna move this all the way there and to the left side we're gonna pull it back and we'll pull it forward just to see that our controls are working now the thing you'd like to do is check out your rudder pedals everything is working if I show you what's going on outside this is going on outside and now we're going to release our parking brakes and line up onto the runway. Today we will be using Toga thrust which is takeoff go around thrust and that is the maximum thrust on these aircraft. Uh, generally this is not done but as you can see my ecam display shows Toga which means I have to use Toga for the takeoff. I'm going to slowly line up onto the runway. We'll just stop the aircraft for a moment so that I can show you the cool feature I was talking about. The cool feature was you go up to the top here to the calls area and you press all. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. See, it's so realistic. The captain just called out, flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. Once we've done that, we're done with that, we can take our parking brakes are already off and now we can apply power for takeoff. So I'm just going to push my throttles all the way to their maximum and the aircraft will respond to that instantly. instantly hear the aircraft powering down because you necessarily don't need maximum thrust for flight and as you can see the aircraft is lining up with our flight plan we can go into the map turn on GPS tracking and see that the aircraft is now going towards this line which is our flight path got that sorted you can already see that the aircraft is at speed exceeding its speed which we do not want so we're gonna select the indicated airspeed sorry the engage selected airspeed mode and it's going above that so we're just gonna decrease power from here just so 
that it flies within the legal limits. I'm going to decrease this to 250 now again. As you can see, the aircraft is now climbing. We are at 4,200 feet with a VS or vertical speed of 1,200 feet per minute. And we are passing LA. Beautiful day today. Just to view the aircraft on outside. What I'm guessing is friends that this is Beverly Hills right here this area and now since we've reached our 250 knots the aircraft is powering up once again on the auto throttle to maintain that speed now before I end this video today all I wanted to tell you guys another tip is that once you're if you're using the sim brief uh, flight plan like I do and I rec strongly recommend that because um, the AT2NX doesn't respond well to the uh, flight planning tool in Microsoft Flight Simulator itself you go up here and you select engage manage speed mode what that does is the aircraft manages its own speed so once it's going to go uh, under 10,000 feet it's going to come to 250 knots and once you go above 10,000 feet, uh, feet it's going to start increasing to its cruising speed so once we increase that this area goes blank which means that the aircraft will now manage its own speed now you can see that is at 6500 uh, feet of altitude the speed is still at 250 but as soon as we go above 10,000 it's going to start increasing so I'm just going to play this and let it go up to 10,000 feet and give you a few more ideas and tips before I end today's video this is basically showing us our fuel average so it shows that the engines will use about 16 60 and 1500 tons of uh, sorry 1500 kilograms of fuel and now it's balanced to at 1640 it's going up and down but around 16 1.6 tons of fuel an hour and this is the fuel used 270 kilograms per engine it comes down to a total of 540 kilograms Another thing we can do now is disarm our ground spoilers. We are at 8,000 feet already. As we start moving towards our destination, you can see that the first waypoint is no longer 151 nautical miles away, it is 124 nautical miles away, which also proves that the aircraft is now flying in the right direction. We are soon about to pass 10,000 feet. You can also once again put your throttle levers to climb which will just give the aircraft necessary power and as we go above 10,000 feet you can see that this pink indicator just went up to around 290 and 
you can hear the engines wrap up. You see, this basically means that now since the aircraft is above 10,000 feet, the aircraft can now start going to its cruising speed. Another thing, now since we are above 10,000 feet, we can turn all of our lights off, such as our landing lights, we can retract them, turn the nose light off completely, the nav, wing lights, beacon lights and strobe lights will remain on. And that my friends concludes today's video. You can see this aircraft is reaching this speed uh, which is around 0.53 Mach which is 53% of the speed of sound. So we're gonna let this flight continue and once again I thank you guys for watching. You can look at all the beautiful views the flight to be here as we fly above to California. Once again guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video to any of your friends who want to start flight simming and please do comment uh, below if you like this video or not, if I should do more of these or not and what you would like me to improve on. And the next video will probably be the cruising phase of flight and after that how to 